Andrew, it's been uh, well nearly a year since we last sat down together. It's been Very a while. different time. It was in my London studio, and eight days after that, you got arrested. What's the year been like for you? It's certainly been an interesting one. I've been constrained this entire year. I spent 93 days in a Romanian dungeon, five months locked in my house, and now I'm restrained within the country of Romania. So it's certainly been a turbulent time. The moment you got arrested, it was all pretty dramatic. The video came out, the world saw it, a lot of people smashing into your, your home. Did you have any inkling, warning that something like this may happen? I knew it. I kept saying before I was arrested on every single podcast I did, I said, you get three lives in the world. The first life, they're going to cancel you. They're going to slander you. They're going to delete your access to social media so you can't defend yourself. The second life, they're going to try and put you in jail for no reason. And if you continue to speak against the power, they're going to assassinate you. I knew I was on my second life. I kept saying it. I knew it was coming. I didn't know the bullshit reason they'd use, but I found out once I was in a cell. When you were arrested, you, you didn't actually, you don't speak any Romanian. Zero. Zero. And they didn't speak English to you. Correct. So you were taken to a cell. You had no idea what they were alleging you'd done. I was arrested on the 27th of December. So because of Christmas and New Year's and other problems, they couldn't even translate my paperwork for two weeks. So for the first two weeks I was in a prison cell, I had no idea why. I was given papers in Romanian. I could read human trafficking. I understood, but I was like, human trafficking who, when, what? None of this makes sense. I waited two entire weeks inside of my cell before I was given an English translation and then I realized exactly how ridiculous the whole case was. Just to clarify, I am accused of helping my friends get big on TikTok. That is what I'm accused of. I told some girls I know how to post on TikTok to become viral when I was at the time the most viral person on the planet. And they are saying I'm a human trafficker for that reason. It is insane. You in jail, what was that like? Romanian jail is not English jail. Describe it, what was the cell like? I have to be careful what I say because I don't want to insult the Romanian justice system, which I'm still beholden to. However, it's exactly as bad as people would expect it to be. Luckily, it was in the winter, so the cockroaches were not too bad. It was also during Ramadan, so I didn't have to eat so much, which was helpful because of the situation. I think the most stressful thing about it is I had no idea how long I was going to be in there for. I was dragged from my house. I was given papers in Romanian. I didn't know why I was there. I found out why I was there, and it was garbage. I couldn't seem to get out. I could have been held for years. It's very stressful, and uh, the best thing you can do is turn to God and, and train as hard as possible. I did thousands of push-ups a day every Were single day. Were you in day. solitary this, in this period, three months? I, no, I wasn't in solitary the entire month, the entire time. Sometimes I was by myself, sometimes I was with other guys, and sometimes I was with my brother. So, When you were on your own, were they keeping you in there for 24 hours a day? Were you allowed out? No, I wasn't allowed out. There was no yard time. It was 24 hours a day, locked in a single room, probably three or four steps large and you do nothing but stare at the wall and you think How many days did you do that for on your own? 11, 12. I mean, that's a pretty grim scenario for, for anyone. Life's grim. Did you get emotional? Did you shed tears in your cell? I'm an emotional man. I think, I think men are hyper emotional. We just have to control it. I was extremely busy inside of my jail cell. I had lots of push-ups to do. I was very concerned about the people on the outside. I was trying my best to get out. It's difficult for me to answer the question because it was an interesting frame of mind. I knew that God was watching and I had to perform. It's very difficult for me to go through life saying I'm the top G, I'm this, I'm that, and speak about mental resilience and mental toughness, and then the second I'm thrown inside of a solitary confinement cell, cower out. I'm not that person. There's some, is, other, there's some other people who talk about mental toughness and want to give advice, and when bad things happen to them, they end up addicted to prescription drugs. I'm not a coward and I'm not a liar. So you cried. There were tears that ran down my face, but I did not cry. I mean, that's crying. I would disagree. When you found out what they were alleging you'd done, sexual assault, exploitation, and so on, what did you feel about that? What was your first reaction? My first reaction was, ah, the standard playbook. The standard playbook for anybody who speaks up against power is sexual exploitation. Isn't that the normal one they go to? Can't we name like 10 or 15 people right now they hit them with this exact same garbage? I mean, to be clear, I don't know if you're guilty or not. I do. You're perfectly entitled to say that, and you know, right? Of course I know. But I don't know, and I will await any trial that comes uh, to see what comes out in the trial and see what happens, right? So I'm not going to prejudge the trial. I'm not going to judge you and say, I think you're guilty. I don't know. 
yeah. right? We are where we are. You've been charged with serious crimes and it's likely you'll face a trial and we'll see how that all plays out, obviously. Going back to jail, how were you treated by other people? Everybody in jail was extremely apologetic to me. All of the staff, the police officers, everyone who worked in the jail, the person who served me my meal, everybody was very sorry for what happened to me. They made it very clear they knew it was garbage and they were apologetic. That was the only vibe I could give you. They were kind of like, listen, you got too big. I'm sorry, but this is how things work. And sorry, here's your meal. Nobody had any real problem with me. None of the prisoners had a problem with me. Did and you get into any fines? There was a, a, a couple scenarios where violence could have occurred, but I think once people realize that violence is a certainty and that you do not operate under a fearful realm, they often aren't so interested. So people threatened you? I wouldn't say they threatened me, but they would have liked to have got the opportunity to threaten me. And what happened? And they realized that would have been a bad decision. One of the things I would think about, other than my family, immediate family, but one particular member of my family, if I found myself in jail, would be my mother and what she would be feeling and what she'd be thinking. She's been incredibly supportive to me. I know yours has to you. Did you think about your mother? I was extremely concerned for her. I was concerned because the media establishment were hounding her. She was obviously very worried, but she knew she wrote, raised strong sons. But we're her number one protectors, and I was concerned for her. I, I wasn't concerned for myself in jail. I didn't even suffer in jail as, mo as much as I did when I got out. I didn't have nightmares in jail. I had nightmares once I left jail. I was in the middle of a battle. I don't think you get PTSD while you're fighting. You get it afterwards. I was in the middle of a battle trying to make sure that everybody I love and care about is taken care of and trying to make sure that bills are paid. Please understand, the day I was arrested, which is a year ago, every single bank account that I have was frozen. All of my assets were taken. I haven't had a, a dollar of money yeah, 10 since cars January. taken, I think. 15. 15 cars and, some, and how many properties? 15 cars, six properties, 20 diamond watches, gold bars, cash, land, every single bank account, millions and millions and what millions of dollars. What was the total value of everything they seized? 16, 17 million pounds. Yeah. And they took all of it. And I still don't have access to any of these things. I mean, as we're doing this interview, you're expecting to hear sometime today as to whether you may get those possessions back. Is it, is it all or nothing? Do you get it all back or nothing? Correct. As we sit here, the judge is deciding whether I get all of my items returned or I get none of them returned. And truthfully, under the law, I should have never had them taken in the first place. So we're gonna see what the judge decides. And I have to put my faith within the Romanian judicial system. I have no other choice. I'm not a coward, I'm not gonna run. When you were released from jail after about three months, what was that feeling like? I, my, my brother and I were in the same cell at that time. We were extremely happy. I remember using the last of my mouthwash. During the day, I had some rituals to keep me sane, and I'd enjoy one swig of mouthwash a day. It's amazing how bored you get when you're staring at cockroaches, and even that sensation so was So there were literally cockroaches in your cell? Correct. There was an infestation. We did our best to kill as many as we could. They kept us entertained, but uh, they're annoying to sleep with. But... Mouthwash was something I enjoyed every day. The sensation of mouthwash made me happy, and I remember using all of my mouthwash. And then instantly, my brain started turning to all of the things I need to do. I'm a man. I have responsibilities. For 93 days, I wasn't working. I started concerning myself with, okay, I'm about to get out of jail. Thank God. I'm going to leave. Who do I need to take care of? What's paid? Do I have any money left? Are bills due? Is mom okay? Are my children okay? And I just started thinking about work. And as soon as I got out, I didn't sleep for three days. You come out of prison, you've got no ability to access any of your assets. How have you been functioning financially since then? I believe in prayer and I trust in God. Well, prayer I, doesn't pay the bills. God has been paying my bills so far, it seems. Mm. It's amazing how far faith can take you. It's often when you have absolutely nothing left, people turn to faith. But you should turn to faith first and you should believe in God when things are good and that mm. he will be there when times are bad.